Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number 17 in our tutorial series where you are building a non-axis inertial measurement system. What I need you to do today is pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. No sugar, none needed, and in particular please don't use those little pink or yellow cancer packets, okay? Just strong, hot, black coffee over ice. That is all you need for a delicious and refreshing beverage that will get you through this lesson. And I also need you to get ready to learn a little trigonometry, okay? Just as a reminder of where we are in this project, we are using a BNO055 inertial measurement sensor connected to an Arduino Nano. And if I remember right back about lesson number 12, we had done everything that we needed to do where we were getting from the BNO055 into the Nano, we were getting approximations for the angles of yaw, okay, approximations for yaw, approximations for pitch, and approximations for roll. So we were getting roll, pitch, and yaw, and then we were sending that data over to vPython, and then in vPython we were just printing out the data. Okay, now the data was in vPython in lesson number 12. Well then we want to start building visuals and doing these simulations, so you had to learn a little bit about vPython. And so I believe in lessons number 13 through lesson number 15, you were just building some simple little illustrations, like I believe we made a box with marbles moving around in it, and we did some simple, uh, simple little projects of moving things and changing the dimensions of things, getting familiar with vPython. But now, if you look at what we really want to do here, we're not moving things around, we are rotating things. And in order for me to show you how to rotate things in vPython, you've got to understand some very simple trigonometry. Now, if you know trigonometry, great. This lesson is just going to be a review. But if you don't know trigonometry, then this is going to show you the few simple things that you need in order to understand the rest of the lessons. Because in the rest of the lessons, I don't want you to just be copying things that you don't understand. All right. So what you can see that I've done here is, I've kind of taken this uh, rigid body, which is our breadboard and our sensor and our nano, and I've kind of put an arrow on it. So what we're going to start thinking is, we're and, and I put an arrow in the direction that this is pointing, so as I point in a different direction, the arrow moves, and also kind of like what is the up direction, what is the direction that is perpendicular to the surface, uh, perpendicular to the up surface. And so what you can see is as you move around, you can think of it as just moving around this vector. So then you can all of a sudden just take the rigid body away and start thinking of the vector. <coughs> and what you're going to need to think of is you're going to need to think of this vector as the hypotenuse of a triangle. All right, And you have the hypotenuse of the triangle, and then you're going to have to figure out the other sides of the triangle. Well, you do that with trigonometry. So let's just review the very simple trigonometry that you're going to need in order to understand the rest of these lessons. And this will go pretty quickly because it is pretty simple. All right, so I am going to draw a right triangle. Okay, uh, I am going to draw a different right triangle. Okay, I will, I'm trying to be mindful so then this will help you understand in a minute. So this is one leg of the triangle. This is another leg of the triangle. And this is the third leg of the triangle. All right. Now, I'm kind of thinking about this as rotation like this. And that rotation, what do we call that? We call that psi. Okay. And so I'm just going to use the, the symbol psi so that you'll sort of see this, this kind of is corresponding to pitch later on. 
or this is sort of corresponding to yaw later on. Now what is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is the long leg of the triangle and so this we'll call H. If this is the hypotenuse and this is the angle, this side is the adjacent side. So this is the side that is adjacent the angle and this is the side that is opposite the angle. Now I know what the length of H is, right, because I've got this is H, this is going to be spinning everywhere, so I know what H is, so I can calculate the adjacent and the opposite side. And that is very simple. The adjacent side is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle, which we are calling psi. And the opposite side is equal to H times the sine of the angle, which is psi. And so let's say that I can make this vector that's sort of kind of like just a conceptual vector, I can make it any length that I want. Why don't we just make it 1? So we're going to say H is equal to 1. Well, in that case, the adjacent side is going to be equal to 1 times the cosine of phi, and the opposite is going to be 1 times the sine of phi. Why did I make it 1? Because it makes the math easier. All right. I make it 1 because it makes the math easier, but in general it's the hypotenuse times the cosine of phi. The opposite is the hypotenuse times the sine of phi. All right, so let's just do a real example. What if phi is equal to 30? <clears throat> what you will need is some sort of scientific calculator. I'm using the TI 84 plus. And you know, we'll be doing these sines and cosines in vPython, but we're just going to do one by hand so you can kind of understand it. I turn it on. Whatever you use, I kind of got a big smudge there, didn't I? Okay. Whatever you use, you will need to make sure that if I'm talking degrees, that you need to be in degrees. So I'm going to go on this one mode, and then you can see that it is in degrees, not radians. So that means I need to put my numbers in in degrees. And so what are these two values going to be? The adjacent is going to be cosine of phi times 1, which is going to be equal to cosine of 30, which is going to be equal to, I'm just going to take the cosine of 30, is equal to 0.87. So it's saying that if this is 1 and this is 30 degrees, then this adjacent side is equal to 0.87. And just kind of a sanity check, if this is 1, that looks like about 0.87. That looks good. Now let's calculate the opposite. The opposite, the opposite is going to be equal to sine of 30. 1 times sine of 30. So then I'm going to say sine of 30 is equal to 0.5. And so it's saying this side is 0.5. And this is equal to 0.5. This is equal to 0.5. So this side is 0.5, that side is 0.87. So does that make sense? If this thing is 1, no matter where I rotate it, I can calculate the end point. That's kind of what I want to do. So now let's, let's kind of go back and think a little bit more tangibly about what we are trying to do. We are trying to rotate this around in three dimensions. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start thinking more about the space that we are in in Visual Python. Do you remember that in Visual Python we can say that this is the positive x direction? I got to kind of see this where I can make it kind of work. Okay, so this is the positive x axis positive x. And this kind of corresponds to north. All right. And so if we're at a zero degree angle, a zero degree yaw, we are 
pointing north. You remember in vPython from the earlier lessons that y comes straight up, so y is sort of like pointing up. Well, what that means then is that means that z is down here. Okay, according to the right hand rule. Because if I go from x to y, then my thumb points in z. So if I go x to y, then my thumb of my right hand points to z. And so let me move this where you can see it. So this is the positive x direction north. This is the positive z direction, which would be east. So if I had the case of rotating this thing like this, that is only yaw. Okay, that is only yaw. So that would be going like this. So what you want to do is for vPython, if I rotate this 30 degrees, and right, I can call this 1. If I rotate 30 degrees, I need to tell vPython for it to be able to do this type of thing that I'm doing here, this type of thing that I am doing here. For me to be able to do this, I've got to tell it what the x and y coordinates of the tip of that arrow are. I've got to tell it the x and y coordinates of the tip of this arrow. All right. What are the x and y coordinates of the tip of this arrow? Well, I've got to do a little trigonometry. Let me draw the vector. I like to draw it as a dotted line. Okay. So, what did we say this was? This is the hypotenuse, and we just said to make it easy, we said that this is 1, and then this is yaw, which we call psi. And now I need to know the x component of the vector, and I know, need to know the z component of the vector. Well, I tell those to vPython, and then vPython will move my body in the right direction where it lines up like this. So what do I know? X component is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of phi, and the Y component is equal to the, or the Z component the z component, which is this direction, is equal to h times the sine of phi. All right. And therefore, for any phi, for any phi or any yaw that I have, I can tell it what this point is. For any phi or yaw, I can tell it what the tip of this arrow is. And then what that will give me is, if I pass then that arrow tip to the visualization, it will move that arrow tip, that is a crazy view there, it will move that arrow tip to that x and y location, and then it will rotate the body. All right? So that's kind of the simplest thing possible, and I think that's simple enough that I can teach you one more thing. Okay, and what is the one more thing that I am going to teach you? Maybe this is a good view. Okay, the one more thing that I'm going to teach you is, is that you're not just going to have a roll. I mean, you're not just going to have a yaw like this. You could also, like this is yaw, you could also pitch. Now, if I pitch, if I pitch, this vector down here, if I pitch, this vector down here is no longer 1, right? Let me draw this from the side. If I draw this from the side, what do you have? You have rolled this vector up by the pitch. You have pulled this vector up by the pitch. And so now this is 1. Okay, and now this vector becomes this vector. Well, if this vector is 1, how long is 
this vector now. This vector is no longer 1, right? I've got to project this down here. How would I do this? This one now is 1 cosine of the pitch. This one now is 1 t cosine of the pitch. So now I can come over here and I can calculate my three values. All right. So what did I have before? If I don't have any pitch, my x value is just simply cosine of the yaw. But that's assuming no pitch, right? If I have pitch, this one is no longer 1. It is 1 times cosine of the pitch. So then the x value would become cosine yaw cosine pitch. All right. The cosine pitch takes the vector and gets its length in this direction and then the cosine phi brings it back to here. All right. Similarly, the z value before it was what? It was the sine of phi. But again, the hypotenuse here, this is no longer 1. It is 1 times cosine theta. Okay, so if I am having a yaw and a pitch, I've got to bring it down with cosine of the pitch and then multiply it by cosine phi for the x and sine of phi for the z. All right. Now, also, if I pitch, if I pitch like this, this is the side view, I now have a y component. Okay. And what is that y component? That y component is going to be 1 Okay. This y component is going to be 1, the overall vector, times the sine of the pitch. So 1 sine pitch. So all of a sudden now I have a y value which is going to be 1 times the sine of the pitch. All right. So do you see what I've done now? For this vector, no matter where I point it, I can come up with the x, the y, or the x, the z, and the y components that will tell vPython exactly where the tip is. And so what we're going to need for next week is we're going to need to remember that the x component of the vector is the cosine of the yaw times the cosine of the pitch. The z value is the sine of the yaw times the, ooh, I made a mistake. Yeah, the sine of the yaw times the cosine of the pitch. And then the y value is just the sine of the pitch. And in vPython, this is x, this is z, and this is y. And now if I put these three values in, what I can get is I can get a simulation like this where you can just sit and watch that vector move around. And I could also add a pitch to it and it would tilt this whole thing and it would work because I am simply telling it the x, the z, and the y coordinates of the end of this vector. Man, I hope this makes sense. I hope this makes sense. But if we take these three things next week and put them into a vPython program, you're going to be able to get this thing to move around. Okay. If this is confusing, guys, if everyone is completely lost, leave a comment down below and maybe we'll do a live stream. Maybe we'll do a live stream to talk about it a little bit more. But I wanted to give you a chance to see this and then if it's not making sense, we can do a we can do a live stream. All right, Paul McCorder from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.